Welcome to another bulletin of the week that was TIOL's News Roundup. Each week we have had some news item on innovative gold smuggling techniques impaired by the high import duty on gold. Perhaps finally queuing into the urgency, the government after much delay has announced the revamped gold monetization scheme and introduced the gold bond scheme promised in budget 2015 which was the major action this week in our policy segment. A host of other long pending issues relating to spectrum trading were also set moving. The cabinet approved the gold monetization and gold bond schemes on Wednesday evening. These schemes are intended to make available to our gems and jewelry industry the idle gold lying in our bank lockers, thereby reducing the industry's reliance on gold imports supplementing the RBI's gold reserves, reducing borrowing costs and managing the current account deficit. A gold reserve fund shall be created. Under the gold monetization scheme, gold in jewellery or as bullion may be deposited in banks for short term, medium or long term in denominations as low as 30 grams. The interest earned under the gold monetization scheme shall be exempt from income tax and capital gains tax. The Sovereign Gold Bond Scheme introduces the creation of a new financial asset in paper and DMAT form and allows investors keen to store their gold for a rainy day to purchase gold bonds instead in denominations as low as 2, 5, 10, 50 or even 100 grams up to 500 grams which shall be issued for a period of 5 to 7 years. On maturity, the investor can choose to redeem the principal in physical gold of the same value or in rupees. These bonds may be used as collateral for loans and traded on exchanges to allow an early exit for investors. The government is expected to amend the income tax provisions to provide indexation benefits to long-term capital gains arising on transfer of bond. The government may also consider exemption for capital gains arising on redemption of the bonds. The government has also announced a revamped gold metal loan scheme under which jewellery manufacturers may open a gold metal loan account with banks which would be denominated in grams of gold. However, in spite of these new schemes, experts fear that the initiation of the schemes is a signal that no reduction in customs duty for gold import may be expected. This means that unless the interest on gold deposits is high enough to motivate people to bring out their gold, there could be no let up in gold smuggling estimated to be about 200 tons. So, the battle of wits between customs officials and gold smugglers continues and, and has reached absurd proportions. Keen customs officials are now on the lookout for smuggling of gold in new and surprising forms such as chocolate wrappers, staple pins, mobile phone batteries, television parts and even pen refills and inverters which have been used to conceal and camouflage the gold being smuggled into the country. Even with the increased vigilance, it is not possible to check all goods and all the passengers. The real question is how much of gold escapes detection and gets successfully smuggled. It seems call drops will soon become history. The cabinet has approved the much awaited guidelines for spectrum trading as proposed by the Department of Telecommunications. These guidelines are based on the recommendations of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India and address the issue of spectrum shortage by allowing efficient use of spectrum. The new norms will enable idle spectrum with one service provider to be transferred to another facing a spectrum crunch, thus hopefully either enabling better services for mobile phone users or bringing the services of all operators to an average mean. The government has cleared the confusion among alcohol manufacturers relating to regulation of portable alcohol which will now be with the state government making it totally accountable for the portable alcohol manufactured in the state. The cabinet has approved an amendment in the first schedule of the Industries Development and Regulation Act to transfer the authority to regulate portable alcohol to the state government as recommended by the Law Commission. Industrial alcohol shall continue to be under the jurisdiction of the central government. 
the amendment allows for the practical implementation of the Supreme Court judgment in the case of Bihar distillery. It will create a balance between the union and the states and eliminate the room for abuse of law and misuse of alcohol. Power outages may also become history with the cabinet approving the national offshore wind energy policy which will allow setting up of offshore wind power projects within the exclusive economic zone. The National Institute of Wind Energy as the nodal agency shall allocate offshore wind energy blocks. India has the potential for generating more than 1.5 lakh megawatts of power through offshore wind projects on the coastline along Gujarat and Tamil Nadu alone. An automated teller machine or ATM is no longer an anytime money station only because it has the potential to offer additional services too. The cabinet has cleared 100% foreign direct investment under the automatic route, uh, route for non-bank bodies with a net worth of rupees 100 crore or more to set up white label ATM operations in semi-urban and rural areas. A white label ATM is an ATM without the logo of the bank which offers a variety of banking services without having to visit the bank branch. It is a vital link for achieving financial inclusion and giving wings to the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. The monsoon session of parliament has come to an end and the rollout of the goods and services tax is surely derailed. The April 1, 2016 deadline for GST is likely to be missed as the government has given up plans to hold an extended monsoon session of parliament. The next window now is the winter session of parliament scheduled for November end but the government may advance it for passing the GST bill. The government is keen to phase out certain tax exemptions in order to prepare the ground for reduction in corporate tax rate from 30% to 25% over the next four years. The finance minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, has announced that his ministry will bring out a list of such tax exemptions within the next few days. Elimination of tax exemptions will make tax assessment and return simpler. The minister conceded that India needed to align its corporate tax rates with competing countries and bring these at par with global standards. He was speaking at the India Summit 20, 2015 held in New Delhi this week. The government has announced that there shall be no extension of due date for filing income tax returns for certain SSC categories like companies, firms and individuals engaged in proprietary business or profession. The due date for these assessees shall remain September 30th for assessment year 2015-16. The due date for taxpayers with international transactions or specified domestic transactions shall also remain November 30th, 2015. The government rejected the demand for due date extension. So effectively, just pull up your socks and do your duty to avoid any last minute rush. Sometimes good intentions may backfire as the Department of Revenue recently discovered. To protect domestic industry, the government had fixed the minimum import price for marble at almost double its international price. So marble was being imported at the higher price, but as the international purchase price was half, the surplus was either coming back into the country through the Hawala route or was being stashed overseas through the practice of over-invoicing. Now with the black money law in place, importers are reluctant to get caught and pointed out this anomaly to the department for rectification. Consider this, India imported more than $200 million of marble during 2014-15. Cued at the potential for black money generation, the Department of Revenue has directed the Director General of Foreign Trade to consider reduction in the steep minimum import price for marble if it cannot be done away altogether. Technology can be a blessing. The income tax department, which brought in some techno improvement, was pleasantly surprised to have received more than 2 crore returns on its e-filing portal as on September 7th, 2015, which marks an increase of more than 25% over last year, when only 1.63 crore returns were e-filed. The attraction may be the convenience factor. The department for the first time provided the facility of electronic verification of the income tax return and about 33 lakh e-returns have already been verified. This enabled the CPC to 
process over 45 lakh returns and issue refunds to over 22 lakh taxpayers. The Income Tax Department is ready to show clemency and compassion for all taxpayers who have undisclosed bank accounts and assets overseas. The Central Board of Direct Taxes has issued the guidelines for compounding of offences for such assessees. The CBDT, in consultation with the SIT on black money, has clarified that cases may be compounded only after the filing of the prosecution complaint and not at the stage of show cause notice. The board has clearly stated that these guidelines for assessees with foreign accounts or assets will not apply to cases coming under the purview of the newly enacted Black Money Imposition of Tax Act, which does not provide for compounding of offences. The message is clear. For availing amnesty, be sensible, declare and pay. Now for some news from the courts. Is it necessary for a multinational in the business of export of services to promote Indian brands in order to become eligible to avail of a trade benefit like duty credit? In answering yes to this question, the Bombay High Court has deferred with the position taken by the Delhi High Court. The Secretary, Department of Commerce and Industry passed an order that multinationals promoting foreign brands were not entitled to the duty credit script under the Served from India scheme. The Bombay High Court has ruled in favour of the government, holding that the objective of the benefit was to create a unique Indian brand, instantly recognised and respected worldwide. Hence, an entity establishing a foreign brand of service in India, which is already created and established, would not qualify and be eligible for the FSIS benefit. The Bombay High Court observed that the Delhi High Court had construed the expression Indian service provider rather narrowly and not in the backdrop of interpreting policy measures in a holistic manner. The Bombay High Court disagreed with the views of the Delhi High Court in the case of Yum Restaurants, but held that revenue cannot recover the benefits already granted until 2007-8. Ice cream may be sweet, but it is not a sweet or sweet meat, and therefore the higher sales tax of 8% shall continue to be levied on ice cream. This is the recent ruling of the Bombay High Court when Wadilal Dairy International challenged the higher rate of tax on ice cream even though it is as sweet as Shrikhand, Basundi, pastries and even kulfi which attracts a lower rate. Now for some news. Officials have become vigorously keen about tax collection. The Municipal Corporation of South Delhi as a last resort has attached the bank accounts and properties of some prominent property tax defaulters like Radisson Blue Hotel in Dwarka, Sports Authority of India and Jamia Hamdard University. If Hotel Radisson Blue, the largest defaulter, does not pay its dues, the collection department is ready to initiate the process of auctioning the hotel. It may be recalled that earlier this year, the Chennai Municipal Cor Council had hired eunuchs and transsexuals to badger and shame defaulters into paying the property tax dues, even reporting an increase in tax collection, the extent to which civic bodies will go to recover dues. Even religion may need to bow down before the government. Pilgrims taking a helicopter ride to Mata Vaishnu Devi Shrine will need to pay more for this facility. The state government has issued a notification for imposition of a 12.5% service tax in an attempt to reduce the number of pilgrims visiting this mountain shrine. The opposition has lashed out against this unpopular tax and demanded its immediate withdrawal by pointing out that the number of pilgrims has already reduced and it is a facility being availed of by ordinary families for their aged parents and children unable to take the 26-kilometer trek. Is the government listening? Now for some corporate news. The Prime Minister's Make in India initiative has brought India a 1 billion euro investment commitment from Siemens AG, the German conglomerate, which also plans to add 4,000 jobs to its existing workforce of 16,000 in the country. For doing this, the European group, which already claims to have invested 2 billion euros in the last 10 years, is looking at mergers and acquisitions in software, besides shifting some of its international functions to India. On this note, we conclude our 
third episode of the week that was a TIOL news roundup. Please do write to us your comments, counsel, criticism and even news at editor at TIOL.in. You may also subscribe to TIOL Tube to remain updated on new posts. It's free. Have a good weekend. Thank you.